everybody, I'm Maria Willis from Card Bomb here for Tonic Studios, and today launched the newest Stamp Club release. It's called Compassion and Poppies, and it is such a beautiful release. There are a lot of different things that you can do with it, and I'd like to show you some of the ways that I found to use it. So let's head over to my desk and check it out. The Compassion and Poppies stamp set has some really beautiful floral stamps. It's got a couple of larger images that are really great to create a focal point on a card, but it also has some leaves and loose florals that are great for creating your own layout. The sentiments are straight from the heart and are beautiful as well. There are dies that coordinate with the stamps, but there are also dies that stand alone as well as a fantastic set of rectangular frames. Let's start by taking a look at this large poppy stamp. I'm going to start by heat embossing it because this image is so pretty that it can stand all on its own with just some simple embossing. So I used my anti-static tool to prepare my paper, stamped an embossing ink, and now I'm using Nuvo Fine Detail Embossing Powder because I want to emboss in gold. I'm using my heat tool to melt the powder until it has a golden sheen, and this is what it looks like when it's done. All you need to finish this card is add a sentiment and mail it. Next, I'm going to stamp the same image in black ink, and I'm going to set this aside because we're going to do something with it in just a few minutes. Now that you've seen how perfectly that fits on an A2 sized card, I want to show you that this stamp can also very easily be used to create slimline cards. I've taken a wide piece of cardstock and I've positioned it underneath my poppies so that the poppies will cover that left upper side of my cardstock. I'm stamping it. You may need to stamp more than once. Um, stamp as many times as you need to get a clear impression. Now the second time I'm just positioning it so that the flowers will sit a little bit lower and not overlap with the first stamped image. I'm going to repeat this process until I make it all the way to the right side of my card. As I'm doing this, I'm being careful when possible not to put my magnet on top of the freshly stamped ink so that it won't smear. And I'm also being careful to make sure that I'm not overlapping my stamped images as I stamp. You can see what a simple process that was. And now that I'm done, I have this perfectly stamped card base that is just ready to be colored. Now let's take a closer look at these sentiments. These are really great, not just because of the heartwarming messages that they have, but because they are all designed in strips. So the bottom and the top of these are on a pretty straight line, meaning that all you have to do is stamp them, stick them in your trimmer, and with one quick slice, you have a perfect stamped strip sentiment. It does not get much easier than that. Now this stamp here is the second stamp that I consider to be a focal point stamp. I stamped it in black just like I did on this large poppy stamp and used it to create some very easy sympathy cards. I did one with the masking technique and the second one I did some very basic coloring. Now back to our heat embossing. This one I heat embossed in gold, but to create this next card I heat embossed in white on light gray cardstock and added a pop of color with my sentiment strips. Now here's the slimline card that I created. I did it on watercolor cardstock and did some watercoloring and finished it off by adding a sentiment strip and some sequins. Now this large poppy stamp has five flowers in it in a beautiful grouping, but the dies actually cut these flowers out separately. So it's really cool because that means that you can group the flowers however you want after you die cut them. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do this. So I've just laid that down where I want it and I'm using some low tack tape to hold my die in place. I'm gonna pop it in between my cutting plates for my tangerine and crank that through my die cutting machine to get a clean cut. When I pop it out on this side, you're going to see that it only cuts the three flowers on the left. So once I pop that out, I have that sweet little grouping and then you can see that these two flowers are left. I would just place the second die over the top of those and cut them out. And when I do, I'll have the second flower like that. Now you can put them on a card, all five together, or you can separate them and um, group them with that other little flower focal point, however you might like. These three rectangle dies are really great because you can use them separately to create um, rectangles that layer and create mats, or you can use them together like this to create frames. You wanna tape two of the rectangle dies together, making sure that they are evenly spaced, place them on your cardstock and run them through your die cutting machine. The great thing is, is that because you have three different rectangle dies, you can actually create three different size frames. You can combine the small and the medium, the medium and the large, or the small and the large 
for a frame that has a wider width. Here I'm just showing you the medium and the large. And you can see from the center you get one rectangle cut that you can use to layer or as a mat on your card and you get the frame on the left. So this is how that rectangle fits. It's perfect for an A2 sized card as well as is that frame. Now let's take a look at what that would look like on the card. So that single grouping of three would look like this, perfectly centered in one of those frames on your card. Now if you just wanted to use that little grouping of two flowers and maybe combine it with that um, poppy strip at the bottom, it would look like this. I used the large poppies to trim the side out and the smaller poppies went at the bottom and I used my frames to both cut a center hole and to frame the edges so that I could make a shaker card. I also finished it off by adding those really easy sentiment strips to the front of the card. Now this one, I used those rectangle cutouts as layering mats. So I just used a watercolor layer on top of a black layer and created my frame that way. Now I wanna show you some of the dies that stand alone. These two dies can act as either twigs or as stems. Um, they're really beautiful and you can use them however you want. I thought they looked beautiful cut out of these metal sheets that Tonic has. They're so beautiful and it means that the back side of them is also metallic. I cut some silver and some white and I used those in the with the addition of some of the smaller florals to create this card. All I had to do is add a sentiment and it was done. Now the stamp set includes these fronds, which are just beautiful and can be used in a variety of ways, but they also have coordinating dies that can be used with or without the stamp. So here's what they look like with the stamp and without. So I thought it would be fun to take a watercolored background panel and use those dies to cut out a couple of different fronds. I used the colorful die cuts to decorate some hearts and added the keeping you in my heart sentiment. And I loved the way that these turned out. It was the perfect sentiment to finish those off. Let's take another look at some of the cards we talked about today. This was my simple masked off sympathy card. This one was simple stamping and a little bit of coloring. This next card was heat embossing and adding a pop of color with the sentiment strips. This slimline card was easy to create with some repeat stamping. And this card was watercolored and then layered with mats cut from the rectangle frames. This shaker card was also easily put together with the help of those rectangle dies which cut the center out as well as creating the frame. This next card uses just three of those poppies from the main stamp set as well as a rectangular frame to finish the card off. This one uses standalone dies and small florals to create a beautiful arrangement. These last two cards use standalone dies to create colorful focal points for the cards. The Compassion and Poppies Stamp and Die Bundle is available now exclusively from Tonic Studios. If you'd like more information or to head straight to the shop, just click the links in the description box below. Mm -hmm.